All right, watch, folks. Thank you for checking out my video on the Jean Richard or Jean Richard. I'm not 100% sure. For this video, I'm just going to keep it simple and say Jean Richard Terrascope GMT. This is an actually really cool watch if you can find them. Unfortunately, these are no longer made, and I don't believe Jean Richard is in existence. I think they were finally put out of commission. This was a sister brand to Gerard Perigo. So think Rolex to Tudor. And a lot of the manufacturing is done in the same factory that Gerard Perigo make their cases and such. The difference between Jean Richard, this is their entry, this is Gerard Perigo's entry level into the brand. So you got a lot of their case bracelet and detail finishing, really fantastic dial execution. And they just you know, outsource movements. They use ETA-based movements, like a lot of manufacturers today, such as IWC. But this brand was not able to really see the revival that I think they were looking for. And unfortunately, you know, these models are now discontinued. I think one of the things that got lost for a lot of consumers with this brand is, you know, I think it's really hard to always market a name as a brand, feel a little bit I think for watch collectors, when I think of a name, you know, I'm usually linking it to some type of fashion brand. And, you know, not all fashion brands have the, the best reputation for, you know, making great watches. With that said, when you look at the Jean Richard Terrascope GMT, it comes off as a very large, it definitely has the appeal to be considered a large Nautilus homage. First, the brand technically started back all the way in 1681. Daniel Jean Richard creates his first watch and this was technically the first watch to be manufactured in this particular region. Daniel Jean Richard died in 1741, but in that time span, he had made his own watch shop. And I believe there is a museum dedicated to Daniel Jean Richard. In 2002, the Sewin Group decided to change the name to modernize the brand. So Daniel Jean Richard or Daniel John Richard became just John Richard. I'm just going to correct it. I think it's John Richard. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let's just start looking at the details of this watch. And let's start with the case, which I think is probably the most impressive thing of the watch, but also the probably the most controversial. The case is 44 millimeters wide and then 50 millimeters lug to lug. So right at the perfect mark where this can accommodate a lot of different wrist sizes. For it to be a 44 millimeter watch and have a 50 millimeter lug to lug is actually really impressive. And John Richard does that by having these really short lugs that really hug the case. I am not sure what to call this case shape. You can say tourneau, you can say cushion, but this is a patented Jean Richard case. And so I've not really seen anyone use it. I think the other impressive thing is that the watch is only 12.6 millimeters thick. So for a GMT of this case size, there is some really serious engineering, especially when you take into account all the details, the polishing, the multiple levels, this is a very, very special case design. And after further research, I did learn that this case is 100% patented and entirely manufactured at the Le Chau de Fonds plant. Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm butchering that. You know, a pretty extensive process to get all the detailing. And when you look at the detailing of this case, it is amazing. On the sides, you have vertical brush finishing that is almost a very unique matte blasted vertical brushing that gives the watch a level of toughness and then you go up and you have just tons of polishing and beveling and then you step up one over where you get this really high polished bezel with the same vertical finishing vertical matte finishing to go along the bezel giving it a little bit of a nautilus vibe but still keeping a lot of its own unique characters but just the case shape and the level of detail is very very impressive the crown also is very well executed and has a lot of detail going into it. So you have these really big, bold knurlings that allow the crown to be gripped easily. This is not a screw down crown and I do not see any mention on the water resistance on the watch. But with that said, pull it out the first time and forward will allow you to set the GMT hand. Counterclockwise will allow you to set the date and then you can pull it all the way out. Back up real quick. So I do love that this GMT hand can be set independently. So this is truly a second GMT hand and you can also set it along with your home time. Looking at the dial, the dial is extremely impressive and we're just gonna break down these components. For starters, you get hand applied baton style hour markers that really pop and then you have wing tips going on the exteriors of those where you get some great 
glow on the tips at night in addition to just beautiful bright green c3 super luminova that's applied to the hands as well make this really easy to to read in a variety of different settings there's so much contrast on the dial i don't even think you need the loom to be working to see that this watch is relatively legible given that the hour markers and the hands are so high polished against this black dial it allows the watch to light up in even very limited light. Right on the outside of the hour markers, you have the 24 hour scale. Due to the size of the GMT hand, there are definitely points of the day where it is not visible, uh, just depending on what time it is. I don't know how common that is with other GMT watches. However, I feel like this one is a little bit more noticeable, uh, just given the size of the normal hour and minute hands. Let's talk about the normal hour and minute hands. So I am a huge fan of broad sword style hands and these hands are big and bold for a big and bold watch. They look fantastic against the contrast of this dial. Now looking at the second hand, you have a high polished silver second hand with a red tip filled with white super luminova. This really just looks great and make reading the exact seconds just that much more enjoyable and easy. As far as font on the dial, you have the 24 hour scale going along the interior. You have John Richard right at the 12 o'clock right below that 24 and then Terrascope GMT. This is definitely not a cleaned out, definitely busy and this could be the reason why this particular model was a turn off or would be collectors. So the movement according to Jean Richard is their JR60. This is a Salita SW200 movement which makes sense with a watch with this level of detail and finishing. Putting an in-house movement would have definitely doubled if not potentially tripled the price. I think you're getting a lot of details that would compare relatively close to, to watches that Gerard Perigo has put out. Just the case finishing and detailing alone is extremely impressive. This definitely Definitely looks like a higher grade Salita base movement and they went with their custom roller. The bracelet, the links are brushed, but the edges are polished and that is done on each of the individual links. So what it does, it creates this matte but very blingy look at the same time. It is a very interesting bracelet design and once again, probably the best bracelet design that I've seen on the watch. I would say that this bracelet feels like it belongs on something made by Moser and that is probably the highest compliment that I could give this watch. A rare pickup, these do not come up usually very often on the forums but you can find them on Ashford I've seen quite a few pop up on eBay on the wrist the watch is huge there is no doubt about it it is 44 millimeters and it looks every bit of 44 millimeters on my seven and a quarter inch wrist there's just so much dial because of the case design it makes you go on this journey when you look down you start off with that 42 millimeter circle then you get out to the wider part but it wears extremely well because of the 50 millimeter lug length and then only being 12 and a half millimeters thick for a watch this size on the bracelet it is just secure it feels so integrated but once again as i said earlier this is a very heavy watch the links on how i have it sized now it is at 254 grams compare that to my dual met which is all yellow gold uh, that's that was 180 again very very heavy watch but it is a big watch and if you're looking to make a statement this is definitely a watch that you should consider. Unfortunately, you can no longer find these new. I'm sure that servicing these Salita based movements will be very simple in the future. So there is no concern. I know that is always a concern when people try new watch brands. If you don't care about the name on a dial and you want a watch that is really well manufactured, I would argue one of the best bracelets I've seen in watchmaking and I've owned uh, quite a few watches. You should see if you can hunt down a John Richard Terrascope GMT, you might be able to find a really good deal on it. Thank you for watching, please. Also check out my Instagram page by the same name, J Will, J Will Studio, where I post all my other watch related content. And as always, thanks for watching. See you all soon.